Okay, Castle here again. What we're going to do today with this video, it's another review video. We're going to review fascial fitness training. Okay? Again, because this isn't an instructional, instructional video, it's a review. So if you want to find out more about this, go to my blog. It's on castlebodywork.com. And uh, just look for fascial fitness training and you, you can get a great explanation about the science that's behind this. All right? First thing we're going to do is we're going to work on the, the, what they call the abdominal fascia. All right? The abdominal fascia, you, you can divide it into upper and lower components. It's really all working together, but as we, as we work through some of these exercises, we're either going to flex our hips by bringing our trunk up, or we're going to flex our hips by bringing our legs up. Okay? One thing that, that you need to remember is we have to come up with two, two types of stretching to, to create fascia fitness. One is called the slow dynamic stretch, and the other is called the fast dynamic stretch. You combine these two types of stretching, and you will create a type of stimulation that affects the collagen fibers uh, in our body. The college, collagen fibers are the, the primarily uh, what makes up the connective tissue. All right. The reason you want this is important is uh, as we age, our collagen fibers degrade. And the degradation involves losing the crimped characteristic, which provides the ability to absorb and then release in a catapult motion energy. As we age, get over 30 years old, we start to lose that capability. As we lose that capability, the muscles themselves have to take on a much greater role than they're really designed to do. And uh, eventually what happens is they, they start to be overused. Just in normal uh, everyday movements, normal everyday activities, the musculature starts to become overused. And we run into all kinds of little pain syndromes, low back pain, hip pain, knee pain, things like that. Uh, this is one of the ways to avoid that, is by maintaining fascial or connective tissue fitness. Okay, first one. We're going to take a look at the abdominal fascia, all right? Like I said before, you can work it from the top down or from the bottom up. Uh, both ways uh, stimulate the connective tissue in the, in the abdominal fascia. So the first thing we're going to do, this is just, it's going to be an upper body move. It's a straight leg sit up. The difference is, is we're going to start with our arms extended as far out as we can reach. Okay? And what we're doing is we're pulling apart the rib cage from the, the pelvis, creating a stretch. All right? So we create a stretch and then we rebound pretty aggressively by throwing your arms forward. Stretch, throw. Stretch, throw. Okay, this is the, the slow dynamic stretch for the upper part of the abdominal fascia. Okay. I know, everybody used to say you're not supposed to do sit-ups this way. This isn't a strength move. This is for stimulating the collagen in the abdominal fascia. Okay? And this is what's called the long dynamic stretch. All right. So now we've got to add a piece to that. We've got to create a fast dynamic stretch. It's going to be the same motion, same movement, except we're not going to sit up as far, we're only going to sit up to about 45 degrees, and then we're going to go back into that long stretch. 
So the fast dynamic stretch is going to look like this. So that's the slow dynamic and fast dynamic stretch for the upper part of the uh, abdominal fascia. Now we want to work on the lower part of the abdominal fascia. And all we're going to do really is we're just going to move from the opposite end. Instead of pulling our torso up, we're going to hip hinge from, up, from below. Okay? And what I do with this is I take a couple of hand weights, and this helps to keep me in a long stretch like this, okay? When we start out with a bilateral uh, leg lift, it's just this motion here. You just let it touch down, alright? Keeping your legs straight, you want to stretch long in between each contraction, okay? Like this. Beautiful. All right. Now to create a fast dynamic stretch, or the slow, or the fast bouncing, soft bouncing rather, what you're going to do is just this motion right here. You got to concentrate on pushing your hands long. Otherwise, this isn't going to do anything. You got to push those hands long. Okay. There's the fast dynamic piece. Okay. So that was bilateral, now let's just do that same thing in an in a alternating fashion. You want to move like this, stretch to get long in your upper body as you're doing this, back and forth. You just let your heel tap and then you lift. Okay? This is the slow dynamic stretch. Now to make that a, a fast dynamic stretch or what they call soft bouncing, you really got to reach, stretch long, and all you do is alternate like this. If you're not reaching and stretching to get long, you're not going to feel this. But if you stretch enough, you're going to feel exactly what's happening. All right, that's the, that's the fast dynamic stretch or slow bouncing for the lower part of the abdominal fascia. Okay. All right, so that takes care of the abdominal fascia. Now we're gonna work on what they call the lateral line. Lateral line is from the tip of your little finger all the way down your arm, down the side of your body. Where it really makes a big difference is we got this big sheet of fascia right here. It's called the IT band. It's pretty, uh, it's pretty important for our ability to move. We use it in all of our motor patterns, but everybody thinks it's just a bunch of inner tissue and it's not. It's really doing a lot more. All right, so we're going to do the same thing. We've got to come up with a, a technique for, for slow dynamic stretching. That technique is going to be to reach over your head as far as you can reach. And you see your hand comes right down to the floor. Your leg. You let your top leg drop back behind your bottom leg. So it has to reach down to the floor a little bit more. And right there in that motion, that's the, the dynamic stretch, okay? Then you pull up into a little contraction, reach and stretch. Pull up into a little contraction, reach and stretch, okay? So we start out. Little contraction, stretch, contraction, stretch, contraction, stretch, contraction, stretch. Okay, nice. All right, so maybe you're going to do 10 or 20 of those or something like that. Then you're going to move to the fast dynamic stretch, which is the same position, but here's what the motion looks like. Okay, I'm doing it slowly so you can see. And then you just Speed it up a little bit. If you want to use this hand to help, you can. Hold your arm right down against the side of your face. Get a nice little rhythm here. 
like this. This is the fast dynamic stretch for the lateral line. Same thing on the other side. You get a the slow dynamic stretch, a little contraction, stretch, a little contraction, stretch, a little contraction. Then you get into the soft bouncing, fast dynamic stretch. All right, it's the two lateral lines. The third area that we're going to work on is the, what they call the thoracolumbar fascia. That's sort of the, your low back, okay? And again, we're going to work from the top down, then from the bottom up, then we're going to work from both ends at the same time, all right? From the top down, this is the movement pattern, okay? Extending your shoulders and extending your low back. Low back extension, shoulder extension. So a slow, dynamic stretch is like this. And then a fast, dynamic stretch would be like this. Soft bounce. For the lower body, the slow, dynamic stretch is just trying to you're going to contract your glutes and your hamstrings. Try to lift your thighs up off the floor. There's only a couple inches of range of motion here. Get a good contraction there, right? And then the soft bouncing would be to do it like that. Then you bring it all together with this movement pattern right here. All right. That's fascial fitness for just three of the areas. One area is the abdominal fascia, the thoracolumbar fascia, and the lateral line fascia. All right? There's a cycle for the way that fascia is replaced in our body. And that cycle is based on a 48-hour time cycle. And what that means is, is that you don't really have to do this fascial fitness training every day. If you did it every other day, that would probably be uh, pretty effective. And you could even go two days in between. So like if you did it on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, you do it again on Thursday, type of a thing, all right? As you, as you see what I'm doing here though, what you can see is, this is the neutral position, okay? And I'm, for instance, I'm trying to get as much distance between my ribcage and pelvis as I can, but I'm only doing it on a flat surface. There's, there's more, uh, range of motion that I can get. And the way I do that is, I do these exercises over a BOSU ball. But in the beginning, trying to go over that BOSU ball could cause a little bit of an injury. So that safest way to start out with this is to do it flat on the floor. Okay? So anyway, Fascial fitness training, it's the, ba the basic fascial fitness training. If this isn't enough of a, a reminder for you, don't hesitate, just give me a call. We'll get it straightened out. All right.